it's your host, Rick Houston. And in this episode, we're going to be talking to John Dotson. Now, John is one of my favorite people in the sport. He is a master storyteller, probably one of the best storytellers that we've talked to so far for this podcast. Now, John was a longtime crew member in the sport for several different teams, Petty Enterprises, Blue Max Racing with drivers Tim Richmond and Rusty Wallace. He was actually on the 1989 Winston Cup Championship team. Now, John is on the board of directors at the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame in Mooresville. And I love John's perspective because the story that's told at the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame is kind of the story of his own family. How's that, you say? Well, the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame starts with the moonshine trade and goes through motorsports until today. And John's granddad, he was a moonshiner. His dad was a racer, and so was John and his brothers, Barry and Brad. And several other family members were involved in the sport. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Well, John, first of all, you know, the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame, as soon as you walk into the main showroom, the the moonshining legacy of motorsports is right there front and center. It's one of the first things that you see when you walk in the door. Tell us about that exhibit, if you would. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a 37 Ford Coupe, the main car for hauling moonshine with the V8 engine, the flathead V8 engine. Uh, when you walk into the Hall of Fame, we got a, a small steel set up there. It's a small scale steel. Uh, the trunk's open on the old black Ford. It looks like an old garage, you know, like it's in, like <laughs> yeah. rolled up in the old garage. Uh, uh, not a shop to work on a car, but a, a shop to maybe tune the car and then load your moonshine. And the trunk's open, old wooden case of mason jars in there. Uh, from what I know right now, we don't have any white liquor in there. It's just, you know, it's just empty jars right now. And if we did, I know, uh, uh, probably Don Miller, myself, and a couple of the guys would probably. It's it's gone by now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just for the record, just to make clear, yeah. the steel is not operational. Correct? Maybe? No, it is not operational, but it, you can look at it and deduce how you could get white liquor out of that. <laughs> it's not operational, at least not that you're going to tell anybody. <laughs> right. As far as I know, it's not. But, boy, I tell you what, I sure have been uh, – Every time I look at it, I'm like, I would like to build one of those. I would like to, you know, see if I could do that. My grandfather was a moonshiner who I never knew, uh, but I know stories about it. But it's uh, it's an interesting fact, and it's such a fiber of what NASCAR has become now. It's such a fiber of our sport, you know? Yeah. And what I think is really interesting, and we'll get to the, the moonshining part, your grandfather here in just a second, but – what I think is interesting about the NASCAR, but what I think is interesting about the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame is that you start at the beginning with the moonshine, but then the the showroom is full of race cars from a bunch of different eras, and it yep. really does show the progression of what motorsports has become. That's exactly right. It's almost like a historical tour from the beach days. To actually, before the, you know, the beach days, they were just doing flat, straight, you know, recording high speeds, uh, not the circle racing down there around, you know, down A1A and up the beach. The real, the real racing came from the moonshining days here in North Carolina and the, and the red clay soil that God has blessed this state with, uh, you know, it, it might grow some corn and tobacco, but when they plowed out and, and put the moonshine cars out there against each other, it made beautiful racetracks. And uh, in the museum, it starts from the moonshining days. And uh, what's moonshine got to do with it? Well, these guys, my car's faster than yours. And I, you know, that's when racing started. Well, let's just go out here and prove it, you know. And we did it on the old old race tracks and uh, uh, the dirt tracks, and which evolved. And it just shows the evolution as you go through. You'll see convertible racing. You'll see uh, um, um, 
um, you know, the old, another old 37 foot. Who's the female racer that raced back then? Um, Louis Smith. Louis Smith. You'll see her car as soon as you walk in sitting there. And, uh, you know, that's where we started. And then from there, the convertibles and North Wilkesboro and just other tracks where we finally started racing on some paved tracks and just the evolution of the museum as you walk through it. And then not, not only NASCAR, it's 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 North Carolina motorsports. We have motorcycles, drag cars. Um, we got a, a European race car in there. Tony Stewart, some of his uh, race cars that uh, he raced, you know, just every kind of car you want to see in there that, that's got something to do with motorsports. But I'm particularly fond of the 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 history of NASCAR in there. Well, I, and the I, evolution. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's also fascinating that your own family history mirrors NASCAR history because mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier, your grandfather was a moonshiner. Now you said before we started talking or before we started recording that you had stories and I reminded you, uh, I, I reminded you, John, that John, you're the best storyteller <laughs> I have ever met. Of course you have a story about your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, you know, I don't think of myself as a storyteller, but I remember, I remember a lot and I remember things that my dad told me, and it's fascinating to me, you know, the first time you meet Richard Petty, you know, it's just like, where were you the day Elvis died? You know, you know, you remember those things, but, uh, yeah, my, my grandfather was a moonshiner. My daddy lived on, uh, uh, over there near the Dan river in Walnut Coves where they grew up in Stokes County, North Carolina. So Stokes, Wilkes, Surrey, that little chain right through there, uh, big time moonshining area. And, I remember my dad, I asked him one day, uh, uh, there's an old golf course and there's a dam on the Dan River. And my grandfather, one of my grandfathers, was the keeper of the dam uh, down, down there. And I asked my dad, I said, did anybody make liquor down that road? And uh, he said, everybody down that road made liquor. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm like, wow. And they grew corn and tobacco and, and they made liquor. And uh, he said that one day they were sitting on the porch on a Sunday. And I think it was about six or seven brothers and sisters and, you know, grandpa and grand, grandma and uh, said the sheriff drove up and my, my grandfather got off the porch and went down to talk to the sheriff and one of his deputies and they talked and you could see them down there talking. You didn't know what they were saying. Uh, and then uh, grandpa, the sheriff got in his car and left and grandpa came back up on the porch and got the three oldest brothers and said, come on, boys, let's go. And said, where are we going? And they said, we're going to go move the steel. Said the sheriff told me the revenuers are coming through tomorrow and uh, we need to move it. <laughs> so, so that's the connection right there. But what people need to understand is they didn't look at it as breaking the law. Just like when we raced, we didn't look at it as cheating. Everybody we raced against was doing everything they could to get an edge. They did it to make a living and make ends meet. You know, that's that's what you had to do. And uh, uh, some people paid the price for that, and some people got away with it. And luckily, my grandpa got away with it. <laughs> so <laughs> your grandfather was a moonshiner, and then your dad actually became a, a race car driver himself, drove for Petty Enterprises yep. at one time. And then you and at least a couple of your brothers inherited that that family business i guess oh yeah yeah dad drove on the beaches at daytona with his own car he raced in soldier field chicago in a convertible for the petties uh he, he ran a several races for uh um uh, lee petty in the convertible and lee drove the hard top and i'll never forget another story dale earnhardt every time uh, uh, uh ralph earnhardt was driving that convertible before my daddy was and it's in the uh <laughs> It's in the history of NASCAR books that Ralph Earnhardt was driving it at Hickory. And the next Saturday night, my daddy started driving that Petty 88 Oldsmobile uh, number 88 at Bowman Gray Stadium. And he drove it for several races. So anytime Dale Earnhardt would get me in a headlock or pick at me, I would tell him, don't you forget this. They fired your daddy and they hired our daddy. And boy, you talk about getting under his skin. That would get under Dale Earnhardt's skin right there. And you didn't but mess yeah. with Dale. You didn't mess with Dale Senior's daddy. 
Now that, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 he did pounce you. <laughs> Anytime he would pick on me and get an edge, that's what I would tell Dale Earnhardt. I'd say they they fired your daddy and hired our daddy. So don't don't give me no crap. You know, there you we go. had some good we had some good tussles and and fun together. I, I got a lot of good memories there. But back to back to us is yeah, you know, daddy raced for the Petties. He quit racing before I was even born, but it was just bread and us. We had a one car garage behind the house where he he built his and, and maintained his old race car. Uh, he ran at Elkhart Lake, Indiana, back in the day and uh, uh, years ago. I think that's on NASCAR.com and him leading the race up there in his independent car. And we all started with Richard Childress, and then all of us, uh, Bruce, Barry, Brad, and John, and my daddy, all worked for Petty Enterprise at some time in our life. The whole family, uh, Richard and Dale. Every time we see, they kind of recognize that from all of us. Uh, yeah, and then me and Barry and Bradley. Uh, Barry was a crew chief. Uh, we all on, went on with Rusty eventually and, you know, worked for a lot of Hall of Fame drivers and uh, Carol Yarbrough, Rusty Wallace, Tim Richmond, Richard and Kyle Petty, uh, you name them. Uh, uh, like I said, Tim Richmond then won a championship with Rusty Wallace in 89. And, uh, yeah, we had a pretty good run of it, you know. Good life. Tough life. Now, how did you get involved in the Hall of Fame? Um, well, when I, when I stopped racing and, and, uh, I was around 40 years old when I decided it's time to, you know, walk away from it, kind of, I didn't want to walk away and leave it. So that's when they wanted to build the NASCAR, uh, NASCAR technical Institute. So we were closing down our Eel River racing shop, which is now Roush Yates manufacturing solutions and Roush Yates engines. Uh, we were closing that shop down. Uh, I got in touch with UTI through NASCAR and they wanted to build a NASCAR Technical Institute. So I was the first one hired, and I went on, all right, I'm going to go away from fixing wrecked race cars and competitive racing, and we built NASCAR Tech. And then from there, I became like community relations director also. Uh, so started, you know, engaging us in the community because we had, a, you know, 1,800, 18-year-old boys moving to town here, and we didn't have a good image with all these hot rods in town with this school so we, we, we wanted to develop a community relations program and start giving back. And Don was an old friend of mine through racing. So I started just, just participating in things at the Hall of Fame, making contributions, getting students over there to volunteer. And, uh, and then Don asked me to be on the board over time. So I'm on the board of directors there and have been on for, I don't know how many years, many, many years. And, uh, you know, we use that, that Hall of Fame for a lot of events. A lot of our companies here, motorsports companies use it in Mooresville at night and uh, uh, or might rent it. And, and then it's just a great stop. Uh, if you come to Mooresville and, you know, you're looking for something to do in this town racing related, the, you got the Hall of Fame sidewalk downtown. That's ours, this walk of fame. Uh, it's like Hollywood. You go downtown Mooresville, it's there. Uh, stop into the Hall of Fame, as we talked about. The first thing you'll see is the moonshine car sitting there, but you can spend a day in there and, and, and with all the detailed items and small subjects that we, we talk about in that evolution. Lots of pictures, lots of papers, lots of personal items, a lot of Tim Richmond stuff that we have in there. Uh, I was just sent a text this morning about my Rusty Wallace Gatorade uniform. His Rookie of the Year uniform is mine. I own it, and it's on display in there. And uh, somebody's wanting to buy it. And I said, no, it's not for sale. You know, so it's fun to be a part of that. Uh, Don Miller, it was his uh, you know, dream to start it in 1994 when he was uh, running Penske Racing. And uh, now we're at 20 years. Uh, and it just it's, it's just an amazing little stop in a gym here in Mooresville, you know, when you're interested in any kind of motorsports. All right, good deal. Anything else you would like to add about Mooresville or the Technical Institute, or certainly the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know the thing about the Hall of Fame, we got the NASCAR Hall of Fame downtown, and it's a big. You know they got big cars in there and a track and all that, and you got to see that too. But this is just a little gym, and then and once you go in there, you know you're like holy cow, and you just can take your time as you go through there. It's amazing, and we're constantly changing it. Uh, you know, and you can buy, there's a, there's a gift shop in front and I get a lot of items given to me. Uh, I run across items and I just donate it all to the hall of fame. 
and they sell these items. You can you can go in there now. There's a Blue Max hat right there from our our days back in Blue Max. I just happen to have it laying here. You know, this is the kind of nostalgic items you can buy up there. And I'll say one more thing. Everybody at the Hall of Fame is a volunteer. Nobody gets paid. It's a hundred percent run on people volunteering, and any dollar we raise goes toward uh, uh, helping. <clears throat> excuse me, helping abused and underprivileged children in our region here. And we've done that with Stocks for Tots. That's one of our main events at Christmas, uh, raising over a million dollars. Uh, for for you know abused and uh, children here in North Carolina, so that's the key behind this little little uh, gym in in Mooresville. Come to it, uh, go downtown and see the Walk of Fame. We got great restaurants, and uh, it's not been like five or six bucks to get in, so you can't beat that. That's a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it being on. Hey. Was I telling a fib about John Dotson being a storyteller? No, I wasn't. John is one of the best storytellers. As I told him, John is one of the best storytellers that we've ever had on this podcast or on my other podcast, my regular podcast on NASCAR history, the Same Vault Podcast. So, John, I appreciate your time today. And listeners, let us know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe to the show. We'll see you soon with another episode.